What's up, folks? Casual Dad here with another Warhammer Combat Cards Warlord guy. Mm, got it on the, got the rhythm now. Uh, another forty-point warlord here. We now have Huron Blackheart, who is arguably the strongest of the Chaos Warlords. Um, comes in, he's rare, so he levels fairly quickly. He has fear as his stock trait and decent stats, and interestingly, has an attack stat in every single attack type, which by itself gives him a little extra boost there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but really, but, and his stats are, they're middling. So he's got your fear stat line, so his hit points are actually fairly low, which one-on-one, -on -one, lane to lane, he's still very durable because of fear. Um, but then off lane, he's pretty vulnerable, so that's one of the concerns about him, just like uh, Snickrot, except that he has all attack types, so he can clear shields and take out injured cards, no matter what attack type is used against him. Still being uh, 40 points, he does suffer from a weakness to Big Game Hunter, which can negate his fear. Um, so there's that, up and down. But the real magic about Huron Blackheart, the Tyrant of Badab, is this wonderful ability. When a friendly Chaos card kills an enemy card with any attack type, it gains 40% of that card's attack stats, even if the attacking card did not have those attacks previously, which is awesome. Because one of the things about the game in general is that your cards are usually statted based on the traits and the attacks that they have. So if you have a card that has attacks in multiple types, they tend to be more expensive, even for the same attack value, than a card that only has one attack type. So with this guy, one of the things you can do is go pure melee, just your hardest hitting, punchiest melee cards, as you see here, and they are cheaper than equivalent cards because they don't have the other attack types, except they do when you kill opponents with the Tyrant of Badab. So you can see the build I've got here. Uh, this is a little bit of a funny one. I've got a really high level Bloodthirster, so that's why I've got him in here. Um, does that insane heavy melee damage. Because one of the things about this ability is it's really, really good, but it does require your cards to get kills. And they have to be on the board long enough, they have to hit hard enough to get those kills, and then they have to be durable enough to not die uh, to actually benefit from those extra attacks. Because it's only 40% of the attack stat, so you have to kill something pretty scary to really benefit from it. Um, and then you have to not die in time to actually benefit from those increased stats. So that's all a thing. Because of that, most of the very common Huron builds you'll see will focus on regen and fear. Uh, and the two most common pieces you'll see in a Huron deck are either your Keeper of Secrets, because of that outflank and fear and that uh, all attack types across the board. Very strong piece, very durable piece, a really good one in a Huron deck. For me personally, I'd like it to be a little bit higher level. Um, and just it doesn't do, it doesn't usually get kills fast enough for me to feel that it's really necessarily worth it. Alternatively, another good piece is the Lord of Change, uh, also an excellent piece, has that regen, has lower hit points but they're still high enough, has an extremely high psychic attack, and Huron's ability does not say it has to be directly in lane. So as this guy's planking off injured cards from other lanes with that uh, psionic blast, that will still be increasing its attack stats. So <laughs> real good, uh, but also somewhat squishy, so you have to keep it alive. I have looked at cards like the Great and Clean one just because of that sheer durability, but doesn't really have enough hitting power yet, um, and I want him to be probably higher rank poison and higher rank regen before I start using him. But uh, he's also more expensive. The Bloodthirster has the advantage of being the cheapest um, Greater Demon, which is good. Other very powerful pieces include Silaskege, another one that you want to include with that higher Furious Charge, because you can get a kill before you even attack on your turn. Really powerful piece, plus has that inspiring presence to supercharge your other cards. This is a great one in a Huron deck. So you'll see a lot of Huron decks that are very um, Slanesh focused. So it's kind of the, <laughs> sorry, mask. Uh, Huron is kind of the Slanesh god kind of staple. Uh, other pieces are you do have really good fear cards. So this one here has a very high ranged attack and also has fear. Excellent piece because you can then also beef up its other attack stats. Um, a little bit tougher to build around because Chaos doesn't have the best ranged cards, but that's a good one to consider just because of that fear. Likewise for these two. Of course, Karn is a good choice at high level because of his base melee stat, but he does die quite quickly. Um, these are all good pieces, but they're really... Oh, I just got level 9. Oh! Very excited about that. Sorry, had to jump on that. Uh, Typhus, not a great choice because he doesn't have all that much durability, even with that rank 2 fear, and he's fairly expensive for the uh, hit points. Better in a more balanced deck. With Huron, you want fewer, more expensive cards to really maximize your benefit there. Um, shields, of course, are also a good take that'll keep your cards alive. I've had this Terminator guy in the deck before for a long time. Um, Furious Charge, of course, just generally an all-around good piece because you can build up your attack stats before your turn uh, with careful placement and strategy there. Um, yeah, just kind of a good piece. 
This is another one. Neems is another good one to go in here. If you do both Neems and the Lord of Change, you can build up your attack stats at an alarming rate. Just fill with Taunt and Medicaid to keep them both alive. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and play with the list I have right now. Again, I just mentioned that Huron really enjoys having hard hitters and a kind of balanced deck that leans heavily on a couple strong pieces. So you'll notice the decks are rarely full and that most of the cards in them are a little bit more expensive. So we're going to go ahead and deploy this and play a couple games with Huron. Uh, I literally just got the level to get him ranked 2 fear, which I'm very excited about. So let's go to town. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And you will probably notice that I'm getting more excited about the more expensive Warlords because I find that over the 30 point line, most of them are just more interesting. And that's not universally true. Someone like Darkstrider is a really interesting Warlord and is quite cheap. Um, but, yeah, generally true. Is a bit of a bummer to play. Oh, yeah. It's going to take a while to bring that down, but let me show you some weirdly bonused ranged attacks in a Huron deck. Um, yeah, so that target acquired, I did mention the value of that. I really enjoyed this deck build. Uh, some of the most frightening decks I've ever played against in sort of the upper tiers of Terra have been Huron decks, usually built around the Lord of Change. Um, but that's so, it's a really fun one to play, but I haven't exactly got the secret sauce myself yet. Not sure if it's card level or just generally like not knowing how to build it, but this has been my favorite for a while. Look at that. Berserk is a good piece too, because that will let you hit harder than your weight class, and then that stacks with the additional stats you build up. And now look at that. Uh, he will then add Berserk bonus damage to the ranged stack you just got. So there you go. And this one now has 36 range damage. Uh, it's about to die. So there you go right there. That is why you want to make sure you have your beefy, beefy cards so that you can benefit from, and then he's going to die too. So see right there, that's why you don't include the weaker cards. You want to be your heavy hitters in these Huron decks. We'll do this. <laughs> and Huron himself is not on that list because despite his um, balanced attack stats and all, he is fairly fragile. So you want to be very careful deploying him. This is a funny matchup because uh, I have an edge, but at the same time, that's a very heavy ranged attack, so I'm not building my melee attacks up very much. And also it is um, Yarrick. So every time I kill something, I'm also feeding him to hit me back harder, which means that this attrition race is actually a little bit trickier because I am taking a lot more damage back than I would against some of the other opponents who would have this. But uh, we've hit critical mass. This is going to get overwhelming because I'm going to wipe this board, aside from one little guardsman there. Um, which will give me some decent buff stats and let, get me closer to Yarrick himself, who is a squishy. But it gets pretty funny. This guy now is sitting on a 20, 19 ranged attack. About to get more. And this guy's sitting on a 58 ranged attack. That's a bummer. Although it does keep my squishier cards alive and is probably going to kill something with that death blow. <laughs> bummer, though, because that death blow does not increase my own personal stats. <laughs> Look at that Gordor Bond shot back. Look at you. And then we have a taunt here. So I don't want to play Huron too soon. And this I am actively laddering. So this is a um, rank 300 Terra match. Where I'm just shy of the 11k trophies at the end of the season here in the final week of the season. So this is a fun one to actually show. This is a competitive match. Uh, and I did want to highlight that too, is that none of my cards are that high level. Like, they're they're up there. I shouldn't dismiss that. But they're not, you know, they're not max level. They're not anything truly scary. And these are the kinds of matches you get at upper level Terra. So if you are considering laddering, don't hesitate to do it. Just try it. You'll get smacked down by some of the really scary stuff out there, but the majority of games are going to be against like 2.2, 2.5k decks. And you can beat those fairly consistently at a relatively low deck level. So, uh, one more, and then we'll go ahead and close the chapter on Huron Blackheart, the Tyrant of Badab. It is funny, he's got a cool backstory, but I was never really interested in Huron What's that? until after uh, I started playing him in Warhammer Combat Cards. And I really enjoy the mechanics, so I was like, let me look into this guy more. And I haven't looked in 10th edition tabletop, but in 9th edition tabletop, the um, Chaos, the Renegade Space Marine chapter that Huron leads has really interesting rules. Here, look at that. Oh, hi, Fear. I do not fear you. Ooh. All right, all right. 
Now this could be a tough one because this, oh no. <laughs> okay, uh, this could be a tough one. Um, one thing, Huron does benefit from attacking first because you do you are worried about building up your attack stats as quickly as possible before your cards start dying. Um, so yeah, going first is a huge benefit, so definitely consider that when you're building your deck. Um, this is a tricky one because I want attrition to be on my side. I need momentum, I need speed, uh, and I'm looking at another opponent in Zephyrblade who, as I get deeper into the game, all of his cards are just automatically more powerful, which is going to be a bit of an issue as we get down to it. Especially with that, I'm glad it's a low-level big game hunter because that guy could be a real problem real quick. Killed and shooting. Look at that. Oh, yeah. The 60 shooting attack. That said, uh, the Huron bonus where you get the stats of the opposing card you kill considers the current stats of the card you kill. So as I get deeper into this Zephyr Blade deck, the kills I get are going to give me much higher ranged attack bonus. So it's a little bit of back and forth. There's some good, there's some bad. <coughs> That's bad. But maybe it will keep one of my other cards alive. It did. Kept them both alive. Sweet. And really put a giant dent in that board. And gave Fabulous over here another little extra range damage boost. So look at that. He's throwing almost 100 range damage just for fun. Um, and just to keep him alive, Zephyrblade himself is about to hit the board, but there may be another Barrage card in the wing, so we'll put him over here. Okay, so now... I should comfortably be able to take him out. And I'm going to shoot him just to be a jerk. <clears throat> Mm, not enough. Not enough either. All right, we'll just shoot him for fun. Dun, 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 but he is poisoned, but it doesn't matter because it's rank one poison, which is terrible. Mm, no. Excuse me. No matter what happens here, Fabulous is going to get... Oh, or that. And I can just ready him until that four damage per turn poison kills him, but that's, that's stupid. We're not going to do that. Anyway, that is game two with Huron Blackheart. That was a almost 3k Eldar deck. Uh, so that, again, just kind of shows you what sort of games you can play. At the 3k range, you can get a bunch of trophies fairly easily by hitting decks that are, are lower leveled. And props to that guy for getting that high with a rank two, um, rank two card deck. Very impressive. But yeah, there you go. Huron Blackheart in the flesh. One of the really, really fun warlords to play, and one of the cooler pieces of the Chaos faction. So, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you get a chance to play it, let me know what you think.